Juju, please put it on the poll at Lebetard Show. Will you always stop and watch a game show video that has gone viral? Because I believe that the way that all of us consume game shows today in the modern age is when a Wheel of Fortune clip or a Jeopardy clip, <laughs> or in this case, a Price is Right clip, makes an appearance nationally. I believe this has to be. Maybe there is a spin in the history of Price is Right that is as great as what we're about to watch here, but I don't think there's ever been anything better, Stugat. So... As, as a way of setting this up, I'm going to tell you that the participant who is now spinning the wheel is doing so after the first spinner has gotten 90 cents, right. the second spinner has gotten 95 wow. cents, Wow! and now this is the oh. third spinner. And what's spinner. the goal of this for people uh, that don't know? Well, the goal is to get a dollar. Yes, and, closest uh, to a dollar. Right, two spins yes. or a spin that will get you a dollar or closest to a dollar. I said everybody knows the rules, and no one in this room knows the rules of prices. What did you guys do when I've you never were seen sick at home? W well, Maury, probably. Maury? But yeah. Maury. Yeah. Maury? I don't know. Lots I've never seen a second of The Price is Right. What? Ever. The in Price is Right is a staple to a sick day. All Billy I is know, right. this yeah. is what I know. Steve, come on down. Yeah! Woo! And then he goes, and, he, and then that's all they I know. They don't do that anymore. What? Yeah, now the studio of COVID ruined everything. The Price is Right being the most important of things ruined by COVID. So now they just have like eight people in the audience, and I think like what? everyone gets called. Yeah, they have like little pods of people. It's like a whole annoyance. It's not a thing. You want to know what? a fun, fa a fun Hollywood fact about the Price is Right that I was given, Dan? Yes. The Price is Right and Bill Maher use the exact same stage to just move all wow. the props off of the stage wow. for the Price is Right, and then Bill Maher does whatever he does at <laughs> That's night. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did watch that documentary about the guy who like perfected the Price is Right. Did you guys see that? That guy was wrong. That guy was wrong. So the guy the would price watch. Price is wrong, bitch. Y Happy he, Gilmore. Nice. That's, the only, thing That's the only thing I know. Too. Bob Barker when he punches <laughs> Happy Gilmore. Hell of a left hook. Yeah. We actually share a studio without kick. Those are not apples and oranges on the analogous comparison. <laughs> Price is Right and Bill Maher are on opposite ends of the fun spectrum, True. are they not? Yep. Fair <laughs> point. Don't know much about either, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, take me through here, uh, because there was a lot of stuff that I found objectionable about what you guys were saying there. But one thing I didn't understand at all, at the center of the Price is Right documentary you guys are talking about, were you saying that the subject of the movie was wrong or was wronged? Wronged with a D. The man went and he did his studies and he knew the prices of things based on watching the show. They recycled the same prizes over and over again. And he just had, like, a list of what all the prizes were worth. So when he had to guess the prices, he knew them because he watched the show so much. Now, he was an idiot for getting it down to the dollar because then it's like, well, hold on. Something's up here. You got to sell it. Yeah. Exactly right. right. Be off by, like, $25. Yep. Mm -hmm. You got to do like the, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. fake it a little bit. Right. Agonizing Look over out to it. the crowd. Right. Like, what do you yes. guys think? Smugness well, uh... was the real crime there, I suppose. <laughs> this is it a... Always is. What I will describe, I'm going to just say it, the greatest uh, set of spins in the history of Price is Right. So I'm really? Gonna, I'm going to set it up again for you guys who don't know how this game is played. The the He's got to get 100 cents, a total of 100 cents, because the first two spinners are as close as you can possibly be. Nine, There are no one cents on the wheel. It's just five, uh, an, uh, five cent increments. So the first spin was 90 cents. The second one, 95 no, cents. So he has right. to get 95 or a dollar. That With two spins, right. he's got to get to 100. He's got to get over 90 and 95. It's damn near impossible. But look at what happens here. You want to say hi? My mom, my brothers, my sisters, my nieces, my nephews, and all my friends I met today on the way here. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Oh, just, just to taunt you. So <laughs> lands on 90. Okay. So basically, at this point, the only things that help him on the wheel are five and a dime. Right. But then, if he wins, he gets another spin. Five or a dime are the only things like that help him here. Oh. So you would think exactly a dime. Yeah. 
I thought, yes, it lands on a dime, and I thought, okay, this is as good as this video gets. This is miraculous just by itself that this guy was able to land on the one spot on the wheel that helps him win, but now he wins a bonus what a wheel spin. Round. That was a 95, a 90, and then a dollar for Mew. Everybody was spinning big. Oh, my God! Everybody was spinning big on that one. So this wheel's got some mojo in it right now. Uh, you got a thousand bucks. You're on your way to the showcase. Now you get an extra chance to take money from us. One spin, five or fifteen, gets you ten thousand dollars. Dollar gets you twenty-five thousand dollars. Good on. luck. <laughs> Good luck. One spin. Spin for your life. Come on, money. For, he's got to land in one of three places to win money, and there's only one place on the wheel he can land to get all twenty-five thousand dollars. No. no. Lands on a dollar. You will all stop on that, correct? You guys will all stop on game show winning joy that goes viral, correct? Or or game which or one, misery, yeah. Which, which one will you stop on more? <laughs> you're going to stop on more instead of joy. You're going to stop on the person you can make fun of for being dumb, right? I would light the camera on the guy who spun the wheel and got ninety five cents because ninety five cents never loses, never loses in prices. Uh, prices right, and it's just like, yep, you're out of here, right? That yeah. person, Goodbye. That person looked like P.J. Washington at the end of the flexing. game. Flexing. Yeah, Hands flexing. out, up and in then, the air. Yeah. Then, Does that not happen a lot? I don't know. It don't... doesn't happen a lot, but that I've never seen happen. Like, that sequence of events is as is, is mathematically improbable as any sequence of events that could possibly happen on So I show. see that everybody has name tags, right? So everybody in the crowd also has name yeah. tags. Does that mean that they're eligible to go on the show and yes. spin? Yeah, yes. the crowd right. does seem to be bigger than it was that the last time I loud, watched. Yeah. yeah. So people... People can't be happy for the guy because they're like, damn, that could have been me. No, you're always happy. That's the thing. You cheer for everyone. Right. And you yeah. help everyone. The whole crowd is yelling yeah. prices. Yeah, but like, it could have been me, and it's not. I know. Is this the only place There's in America There's a tinge of jealousy. Yes, yeah, of course. There is. There's a tinge of jealousy. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. You think people shout, like, the wrong prices so they do poorly? <laughs> so there's still a spot for them? <laughs> That's a know. good question. I, I would. I want to ask uh, the entirety of the group here. Whittingham took a quite a beating here just for the year that he was here. And yesterday on the show, everyone turned on him for being uh, publicly a coward who has walked away from his crusade of being a pioneer who normalizes the word penis to a national broadcasting audience. He ran into a nemesis here. And you guys help me out. I don't know who Pat Tomasulo is from Chicago. Is he a famous... Chicago uh, sports radio or sports television personality. Can any of you help me with who this He's is? He's a sports anchor on WGN Morning News in Chicago. He went Chicago. after Chris Whittingham. Excuse me, Chicago. <laughs> uh, Thomas Sulo went after Whittingham. Is this Jim's brother? Uh, I don't. Uh, it's not Tom Sula. <laughs> it's not the swamp, mon swamp monster. I'm glad you brought him up, though. J yeah, thank you. That didn't stop me at all. It was a very good joke. With Brings a us total, back to a totally time. different name, not the accurate name or the guy that I'm talking about. Tom Sula. That would have been a better time to keep your microphone off. Let's. Uh, Everyone's let happier thinking about Jim Tom Sula. Put it on the poll at Levitard Show, Juju. Is everyone happier when they think of the swamp monster Jim Tom Sula? I have to be honest, I am. I mean, he should have left his mic shut, but I am I am happy you brought the name. Next up. time I'll Thank do you. it straight to your ear. Thank you. <laughs> Pat Thomas Sulo goes after Whittingham this way. Broadcasters are on platforms smaller than that that don't use the word either. And so why am I going to continue? It, we, we made headlines. It turned into a thing on the show. This is a big program with a big reach. And yet somehow I was the only one. What? Wow. No, the only not. one? <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you something. I walked so you could run. That's right. That's I've been right. saying penis since before <laughs> you could shave, which, judging by the looks of you, yeah. was yesterday. <laughs> Nobody else is doing it. For the last 10 years, you turn on this show any day of the week, I might say penis, I might say testicles, I might say vas deferens, frenulum, corpus spongiosus, <laughs> prostate. Whatever I got to say to accurately convey information to my viewers is what I'm going to say. Are there days when I can do better? Of course. 
Sometimes I'm lazy. And I might say that a guy got hit in his Indiana bones or his Chuck Dickens. <laughs> but I will be damned <laughs> if I let you ignore the sacrifices I have made in the name of journalism and, quite frankly, for a better America. An yeah. America where every yeah. man's broad stripe and bright stars is treated with the dignity oh. and respect they deserve. Oh, oh, that's right. We were really disappointed as a show in Whittingham yesterday. <laughs> That's a real chuckle fest, that show. Huh? My boy dropped some For bars, real. though. <laughs> yeah, he wrote it in a prompter, which is the best part. Honey, I on. might say ovary. I might say uterus. I might say clitoris. Whoa. I might say vulva. Whoa. I might say labia minora. <laughs> I might say labia majora. Fallopian tubes. There's a lane Cervix. here. There's a lane here. If Pat Tomasulo can take that lane. There's a lane here for you, Jessica, <laughs> to be the shocking announcer. I'm running who... out of body parts. Someone feed me another one. <laughs> Indiana Bones was good. I mean... Stars and Stripes was good, too. <laughs> Bringing America into it. Uh, I need to make a couple of corrections from yesterday. I got fooled by the internet again. It happens. Kemba Walker did not score 92 points overseas. What? You and I, uh, you and I also described every time the entire show, when it was talking about NVIDIA, pronounced it wrong uh, because uh, I pronounced it the only way. NVIDIA? You, uh, that's the way. Uh, it's an N and a V. That's how I thought everybody would pronounce it. We all pronounced it wrong. But also, uh, Billy is now feuding with Disney adults. Do we need to make a correction here? Because I don't know that you've had a bigger fight than the one you're presently in. I mean, I, I have a public apology coming out. Well, not apology, but I, I tried to address this on Mystery Crate this week because factually there were some things that I was inaccurate about. And I feel like, as you know me, I'm all about accuracy. So, like, I did say that Disney's Magic Kingdom used to be the happiest place on Earth, and now they changed to the most magical place on Earth. Apparently, Disneyland was the happiest place on Earth always, and in Orlando is always the most magical place on Earth. But that doesn't change the fact that some of the things that I said may, may, have, been, may have been accurate about, you know, them not being super nice, and they used to be nicer. And then I said that there should be separate lines for adults, and there should be separate lines for people with children, and then Disney adults were mad about that. And I said, you know what? I feel like if you actually think about it, this would make a faster experience for you guys as well, because kids take forever in these lines. But they weren't happy about that, so. I might say hymen. <laughs> You allowed to say these words in Florida? Is that, is that a car? I mean, what are we talking about here? That actually was a joke on <laughs> Curb. A car? Like two, like two weeks ago, they were talking the about that. Yeah. I haven't seen the new one. And then Leon was like, "I know what that is. It's a safe ass car." <laughs> Volvo is the one. Volvo is the one that made me laugh. And I do, I do wonder if any of those words uh, are allowed to be said in the state of Florida. Any one of them. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, I, we might have to bleep all of those out now. Uh, Stugatz, I am having trouble, as many people are, because uh, when look at you when Billy <laughs> <laughs> when Billy says he is all about accuracy, I feel like it's harder to be accurate than it has been in a while because I'm watching Drake May throw a ball effortlessly 80 yards and I have to go around the room and ask everybody, is this a real thing or is this like what they did with Michael Vick in a Nike commercial many years ago where he threw a ball out of a stadium because everything can be changed by artificial intelligence? That was real. That one was real? Drake May effortlessly throwing the ball 80 yards. I know Caleb Williams and some others aren't going to be throwing at the combine. Drake May clearly will be throwing at the combine if that's what he's going to show off, isn't uh, it? I he's was talking. Not. I was talking about the Vic one, by the way. He's not going to throw at the combine because he released that video and everybody's like, okay, he's got the chooch. We don't need to see him throw. Hmm. That, but the so we know this video is. <laughs> I'm real. I'm staking my claim that the video is real. Huh. Tony he, told us. Are we getting close to the point where like potential draft prospects could decide to not participate in the combine and release AI videos of themselves doing things they can't actually do? I love that. If there's a way to do it, Braun is going to do it for Bronny soon. <laughs> that's weird. Like that story's weird, right? Yes. Which part of it? Well, where he was like talking up his son and saying he should be drafted high, blah blah blah, whatever. And then as things are playing out, and obviously. You know, his son had a medical issue and like is coming back from that. But as things have played out and people have projected his draft stock falling, now LeBron has pulled a 180 and he's like, why is everybody putting so much pressure on him? He just let him play. And it's like, well, 
you you did this. Let him be a normal kid. On March 6th, LeBron tweeted, man, Bronny definitely better than some of these cats I've been watching on League Pass today. Lightweight hilarious. <laughs> no pressure. With laughing emojis. And then <laughs> yesterday, can y'all please just let the kid be a kid and enjoy college basketball? <laughs> He can't be a normal kid, Dan. He's LeBron's son. I mean, I don't know what LeBron is doing here because a guy posted a mock draft, had had Bronny going in the second round, and by the way, if I'm the Knicks, I would trade up, get Bronny this year, and I would get LeBron James. I would do that if I'm the Knicks. But a guy did a mock draft, and he had Bronny in the second round, and LeBron commented on that and then deleted the tweet. That's absurd. Like, what are you doing? The reason there's pressure on Bronny is because of you, because you're his dad, and that's okay. It's okay. But you, he's added to the pressure with, I want to play with them. Like, basically telling yes. him, get out of college as fast as you can. because So I, I can play, play with, with you. you. Yeah. It is understandable that all of the internet will fall on the head of America's most famous athlete and, uh, you know, a sports, an American sports internet pioneer in terms of following. Parents make mistakes all the time. It's a fairly regular thing. Being the son of LeBron James in basketball seems like something that would be hard to overcome for any child. Also, for a father who wants good things for their child, but also doesn't want to cause things that damage their child. Uh, Bronny, evidently, from what people are saying, isn't all that good. By pro prospect standards, right? He is uh, he has fallen off some Mac, uh, mock draft boards because he probably will have to wait till twenty twenty five to be pro ready. LeBron is talking now. The reports are that LeBron wants a three year nine figure contract. So that LeBron somebody's going to pay LeBron James if he wants three years at tens of millions of dollars a year. They're going to pay for the for whatever the LeBron James circus is in his 40s when he wants to play with his son. I understand every criticism of LeBron James. I understand LeBron wanting to play for, with his son. I also understand LeBron not having any idea how to parent this publicly. Like, how many mistakes did you make with some of your first, with your first, anyone listening to this? I made a ton of with mistakes, With your Dan. first child, yes. with a child, but this set of circumstances where you want to do the best thing for your kid, ensure his future, have him separate and apart from your name when he's going to have, man, do you think it's hard to be Marcus Jordan? Do you think it's hard to be Michael Jordan's kid? Yeah, but Dan, the point is, yes, I made a lot of mistakes. My wife, we made mistakes. We didn't blame others. What, what LeBron is doing is blaming guys who are coming up with mock NBA drafts and coming up with where Bronny's going to fall in said mock NBA drafts. It's not their fault that Bronny's life is difficult. He's it's also, not. Like, he's not running a family business, right? Like, this isn't a paint store that you can hand off to your kid. Like, this is the NBA. You either are good enough or you're not. So, you know, he could be his... It, it obviously is not easy being the son of one of the greatest basketball players of all time, right? But him... Talking his son up as being a great prospect. Like, <laughs> you'll find out if he is or he isn't based on his abilities. And it's no swipe on him. Like, he just is the basketball player that he is. Jessica, are you over under four sneezes a day? Oh, my God. Way over. Sorry. I agree with uh, with your point, though. Like, parenting's really hard. And, and you're, if you're a public figure, there's probably things that you would want to take back. All of my dog's IP now belongs to David Sampson. <laughs> Yeah. I would have changed that. If but I he, go back. LeBron just didn't read the room on, okay, I'm the best basketball player of all time. This is going to be so much pressure on this kid. If I don't say a word, there's already pressure on him. He's the second best and of all he, time. I, I'm not, you're just saying it was a mistake. He, but, and I'm, what am I asking for? He needs to come out and apologize for his mistake. I don't know what I want here, but he just clearly added to the pressure on his kid. And now he's getting mad at the media for stuff that he made more than it needed Understood, to be. and I understand why it is that everyone likes to blame LeBron and want him to be more accountable at every turn. But any of you, as a parent, if you would have made a child that har a, a, a mistake that harmed your child, would you then sit it out after that, or would you try to protect your child? Because I think it's a pretty strong instinct. If your child already has the pressure of you, you've added to the pressure. He's had heart trouble, and now you have to turn on the television? And watch your kid get devoured for not being as great as great at basketball. He's not getting devoured. Not getting His stock devoured. is falling yeah. like any other basketball oh, player. I know, but what the judgment on Bronny is the expectations because he's your son 
arrive in an unreasonable place. You make them worse, even though your life path had you being able to handle all of this at that age in an unprecedented fashion. And now you realize as the father, oh, my son might not be me. And some of the things that I want to fa as a father, and not just a father, Stu God, but a father who's living the life LeBron James has lived it for 20 years, where everything is catered to you yeah. at every turn, feeding your selfishness, supporting your selfishness, pulling you away from your kids at every turn because your life is the thing that matters the most to every human being who enters your orbit. I'd have a hard time raising a child under those circumstances and always doing the right public things. That LeBron James has spent 20 years of what has been his public life since 16 navigating this slalom course. It's amazing. Well publicly. Yes. And now asking him, also, do it perfectly on behalf of your son. Right. As a father, it's just a tough ask. He's going to make some mistakes. But I think we all agree that it's a difficult ask of LeBron James. I think we all realize we would make similar mistakes to LeBron James, the ones that he is making. But don't blame a guy who's putting up a mock draft. I mean, he, but, your son should be treated like oh, any other basketball okay, but, player. So, but how do you In fact, he probably gets perks because he's LeBron's all, son. All fair. Now the question is, you're the dad who's made the mistake. How do you fix it? How do you fix it could, publicly, privately? How do you fix what's, it? What's the mistake? What are we trying to I don't understand. I'm adding the pressure. At making LeBron James' son already had pressure to be great, but when LeBron James notarizes, this guy's already better than NBA players. Yeah, but I think most reasonable people are like, this is just a parent viewing their kid in an unrealistic light. I don't think, I don't think people are actually like, oh, my God, he's not as good as LeBron said. Let me slide him down on the mock drafts. They're just putting him where he is. They're not being mean to him. Totally fine with that. LeBron thinking that his kid is a lot better yeah. than most people do, that's fine. I mean, that's that's natural. Most and on the LeBron's, do that. On LeBron's kids' mine? teams, I'm sure he's the, I'm a lot worse. he was the best player on most of those teams. And, like, how many other high school games is LeBron watching? So he's the best player LeBron has seen, but that doesn't mean he's the best player out there. If I'm LeBron, I think we go back to the AI thing. We harness the power yeah. of artificial intelligence. intelligence. <clears throat> we put out clips of Bronny doing things that he's not actually doing, but yes. we pretend that it's yeah. actually him. We get him drafted. <laughs> if I'm LeBron, that's how I'm using my fame. That's what he should fame. be doing. If yeah. I'm LeBron, I start doing mock drafts, mm -hmm. and I put Bronny number one in every yeah. mock draft. I did. Yeah, yeah. influencer. Yeah. You're put him number, you got to put him number three, though. You put him number one, it's like, oh, it's sell That's one. the yeah, thing. It's, it's like it, the price right. is right. This, yeah. this guy. It's like you can't guess it on the dot. Exactly you can't be right. putting out AI combine videos right. that are super impressive. They have to be like reasonably impressive if he really wanted to do the right thing for his son he'd buy like a foreign team overseas that doesn't have like a good like tv deal right and then you start doing the ai thing once you send him to usc everybody can see him so if you if he's not really that good you hide him away and you start putting out the fake videos and the fake stats because we saw and paulo torres finds out that that's a thing that happens you just make up stats in the nba and you put that out there for those of you who do not know, uh, that is a Tom Haberstroh story involving uh, the Grizzlies statistician. And yep. uh, Pablo Torre finds out PTFO. he's doing some excellent journalism there. What were the, the what were the most amazing things you learned about the all of the fraud in the 90s? Well, what was amazing about it is that it seemed like this was all just a marketing ploy. As the Vancouver Grizzlies were a new expansion team, their stat guy got direction from the team that, hey, juicing stats here and there while we're at home is okay. So there was an example of, he said he was a Lakers fan, and Nick Van Exel ended up in a, in a classic game of his with 23 assists. But when you go back and look at the film, there's an example in the first play of the game where the ball is inbounded to him, and then he gives the ball to Eddie Jones, and that's not on screen. And then Eddie Jones dribbles six times by himself up the court, pump fakes, hits a three, Van Exel gets the assist. So what it says is that while guys were at home, the splits on blocks, on steals, on assists, it was all greater for those teams. So Michael Jordan, when he wins Defensive Player of the Year, mm -hmm. the numbers are a bit juiced by the Chicago Statisticians in 88. No, they're not. Okay. Who are we ripping here? Who do we rip? Right. It's a great Everyone question. from the 90s. No, we don't but need to rip anyone. We just That's what LeBron needs to do to be a good parent. Lie about your child. And no, but he did it. No, but, but who's the fraud? Like whose stats were inflated so much? I just want to rip someone. Who do I rip? Stockton, maybe. 
Hmm? Stockton was the example that they used. Like, assists. yeah, you give that guy an assist. He's John Stockton. I think what you want to do here, Stugat, so that you can always put yourself in positions to win, I think who you want to rip is LeBron James as a father. I think that's what you want to do.